Wrestling Illustrated's scouting report. And now, here's your host, senior editor of Pro Wrestling Illustrated, Bill Lafter. Welcome to another edition of Pro Wrestling Illustrated Scouting Reports. I'm your host, senior editor, Bill After. First of all, welcome to our new time spot. And secondly, thank you for all those thousands upon thousands of letters we've received in our editorial offices in Rockville Center, New York. Last week's show with Magnum TA got such a great response. We've asked the U.S. champ, Magnum TA, to be with us again this week. Magnum, welcome. Bill, pleasure to be here. Magnum, 1985 was a darn good year for you. 1986, I'm sure, you know, looks really rosy to you, I would assume. What, what, what's 86 have in store for you, future plans? Well, 86 will be a continuation of the quest that I started in 1985, which was for the World's Heavyweight Championship held by Ric Flair. Right. We had uh, many long, drawn-out battles, you might say, and they never really uh, ended in any clear-cut conclusion, mm -hmm. anything that I was happy with anyway, and I feel like... Maybe there's just a few keys to the puzzle left, maybe a few pieces that I haven't quite put together yet, but I feel like in 1986 I'll be able to put those pieces in place and then hopefully come up with a winning combination. So that could do it. Also, your United States Heavyweight Championship, several uh, contenders looking, looking to uh, go after Magnum TA. Now, one of those top contenders, Arn Anderson, recently won the World Television Tournament, and I'd like to uh, let everyone take a look at, right now, that World TV Tournament. Okay, Arn Anderson winning the World TV Championship. Arn Anderson also a top contender for the United States Heavyweight Championship. Let's look at Arn Anderson. He's gotten quite a bit more hot-headed ever since Ole Anderson entered his life again. Well, I feel like that's a, an association when you're talking about family members. Certainly, Ole Anderson's track record speaks for itself. So the influence that he's had over Arn definitely can't be a positive one as far as a sportsmanlike attitude because these, these men have on many occasions said that they go out there to hurt people. That's exactly their motto, their ring strategy. So Arn Anderson has carried that strategy over in his one-on-one -on -one wrestling. It's been pretty successful for him because now he is a world television champion. Yeah, so in fact, it has to be acknowledged. So Arn Anderson definitely has to be one of the number one contenders that I'm going to have to deal with and defend in the United Obviously. States Heavyweight Championship. Okay, now probably the one that most people would say is the most controversial of your challengers, Tully Blanchard, the man who you took the title from in that I Quit match. I don't feel like Tully Blanchard and I, the issue there, will ever will ever be solved. As long as the two of us are putting on wrestling boots and entering a wrestling ring, there's always going to be a conflict because neither one of us is going to back down. He's a very tenacious, competitive athlete. He's got a, he's got a definite opinion about the way he should do things. Right. He's not going to change his mind. I'm not going to change mine. But the fact of the matter is he was, was the one that lost the championship to me. He's going to have to come make the challenge to me now because there's other people out there besides Tully. I recognize his credentials in challenging me for this, but I'm not going to totally let myself be obsessed with Tully Blanchard as I was in 1985. A lot of our mail says it's just a matter of time before one of you practically kills the other one. What's your reaction to that? <clears throat> well, I feel that the I Quit match was a situation where we almost did maim each other, yeah. almost to the point of taking it totally out of the realm of, of sport. And when that happened, it sickened me a little bit because mm -hmm. it took a little of the heart out of me because I, right. like, I don't like that. I don't like the animal I became in the ring on right. that particular occasion. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, I don't ever want to have one of those matches again if I can possibly help it. Okay. I don't regret anything that happened, but I want to go on. All right. 
From up in Portland, Oregon, one of the top challengers, Bobby Jaggers. Bobby Jaggers has recently gone from a fan favorite to a hated rule breaker, which he's been through most of his career. He's probably one of the, the most versatile wrestlers. He can use rule breaking tactics and scientific tactics as well. Well, I've done a little bit of scouting on Bobby Jaggers. He's a, he's a relatively heavy looking man. 265 and, pounds. And deceiving in the fact that you would not think he had the agility or the speed or the ability to execute the scientific maneuvers, yet when he gets the opportunity to take advantage of someone, he'll go right back to the old rule breaking, right. kick and punch type a style of wrestling. So that makes him a man is, is dangerous and deceiving and hard to handle in the ring. They call him the hangman. He uses that hangman hold and uh, he, he's another one, as you said, who's out to just destroy his opponents. Let's go to uh, Mid-South right now, Ted DiBiase. Ted DiBiase is a man that over the years I've developed a great deal of respect for, not necessarily caring about his personal aspects or his personality, but he has a great deal of wrestling ability. I've watched him in the ring with uh, very large, strong men that rely totally on his strength, and he's always been, uh, been able to conduct himself in a scientific wrestling manner if that's what he chose to do. The man has got a lot of stamina, a lot of endurance, and he's about, he's about 6'4", 255 pounds. He's, you don't really comprehend how large the man is till you're standing right up on him. And he's got, I think he's got what it takes to be a champion. Let me ask you this, though, Magnum. Recently, he suffered an injury which nearly ended his career, an injury to his neck. Um, would you go, go after something like this? You know he had a neck injury. Would this be your way of getting a, a contender out of the way quickly? I never will go in the ring with, a, with an idea of working on some, someone's uh, an injury per se. I, I try to weaken a part of the body, and that's just a strategy. But as far as a neck, I've never been someone that works uh, strategically as, front, as far as front face locks or head locks. That hasn't been my stronghold. Uh, I believe that sometimes it comes down to a point and maybe you've been wrestling uh, 35 40 minutes mm -hmm. where unconsciously maybe you go for something if you see a weakness but that wouldn't be the first thing I'd go for in a match okay now at 275 pounds Moscow Russia probably one of the the toughest challengers you'll ever have Nikita Koloff I feel outside of myself there's probably no more intense competitor young competitor in wrestling today than Nikita, Nikita Koloff. You know what, let's take a break right here and when we come back, let's take an in-depth look at Nikita Koloff. Okay, we'll be right back, don't you dare go away. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Illustrated Scouting Reports. I'm your host, Bill After. Once again, my guest, United States Heavyweight Champion, Magnum TA. Before the break, we said we'd come back and discuss probably one of the toughest men in professional wrestling, Nikita Koloff. I think when you're looking at Nikita, you look at a man, not necessarily the largest, not necessarily the strongest, but maybe one of the most determined young wrestlers in the sport today. I've watched him against many of his opponents. When he gets someone in there, with a, that doesn't have a great deal of experience. He doesn't waste a whole lot of time. He goes right out on a seek and destroy mission. He doesn't waste a whole lot of effort, a whole lot of moves. He goes out there and accomplishes his goal right mm -hmm. off the bat. And I kind of can relate to that myself because if you've viewed some of my matches, I've had a, quite a few very quick wins on television. That's my philosophy too. You save your strength and your endurance for the times when you know you can have championship matches that might last anywhere from 30 to right, 60 minutes. Right. So I can draw some correlation to the athlete myself, yet he comes from the West, I come from the East. Totally different style and philosophy. Right now, let's take a look as Nikita Koloff takes on Jerry Blackland. Okay, now let's take a look here. Nikita, as you know, is probably one of the strongest men in wrestling and one of the most brutal. Here he is bashing Blackland's head into the turnbuckles. T.A., how would you thwart something like this? Well, anybody that tries to overpower an opponent, there's always wrestling counters, there's always maneuvers where you can use someone's strength against him. If you have a man that's intent on using his strength solely, you have to you have to try to counteract it by not trying to go head to head muscle to muscle with him. You try to outmaneuver him, out, out quick him, have more agility. This man here in the ring with him now is, is obviously totally outclassed and Nikita is intent on punishing the man before he lets him escape through the one, two, three. Here he takes him into the ropes and Blackland looking like he was gonna do something there but the Russian sickle that may taking been, him down. Whew, that may be one of the most devastating moves in professional wrestling. He calls that the Russian sickle. That is his 
version of a lariat or a clothesline, but he calls it a Russian sickle, and no one executes it any more devastatingly than Nikita Koloff. Now, Nikita Koloff also, as you know, has Krusha Khrushchev and uh, Ivan Koloff at ringside periodically, and they've, they've helped him quite a bit in his training, but this Russian sickle, ah, look at that, almost took Blackland's head off with that thing. This Russian sickle is something that they've taught him, and he has perfected better than any other wrestler. Well, it's just like a, any maneuver. There's some things that, that people are just specialized in. They do it better than anyone else. It, it's like my belly-to-belly -belly suplex. It, a lot of people can perform the same maneuver, and it doesn't have the same effect. The clothesline, there's something about Nikita Koloff, the intensity, the speed, the way he executes that move that makes it come off like no one else. Okay, now you have said, and we quoted you saying this, better dead than red. Nikita Koloff will never take your title. How strongly do you feel about this? I mean, what? I feel just as strongly about this as I did when I was on the quest for this title. See, I feel that the only way you keep the prestige and the importance of a title upheld is by going against the toughest competition in the world today. I feel today that my greatest challenge out of all the people we named is Nikita Koloff, and he represents all the things that I disagree with. Mm -hmm. He's here living in our country. He's enjoying all the things that you get from living in America. It makes all the American freedom, money. Making our money, right. living in our land, and constantly putting it down. And that's why I feel like this is a more of a personal thing for me. Being the United States heavyweight champion, representing the United States, yeah. I'm not going to let this man take this from me. Some people have nicknamed him the Russian road warrior. Do you feel that's a, a title befitting him? Well, I've heard that, and I've also heard him call the Russian nightmare, and I mm -hmm. think that is more befitting. The man can be a nightmare to a great many of his opponents, but I think he's going to find in me that he's, he's looking at a whole new ballpark. Are you scared of him at all? Does he intimidate you with his, his size and his, his whole attitude? I'm intimidated by no man. There's nothing to fear but fear itself. I believe if you're prepared to go in a battle, then you're ready. And when I go in the ring with Nikita Koloff, it will be a battle. I'm not going to take anything lightly about okay. him. Okay but he's not going to have an easy task with myself. Okay, right now, Magnum, I want to get to the portion of the show where the fans ask their favorite wrestler a question, and we got a, a question from Tony Flank from Montreal, Quebec, and this one was for Ronnie Garvin. Wanted to know what Ronnie Garvin's favorite hobbies are. So let's take a look right now, and here's Ronnie Garvin with Tony Flank's question and an answer. This is in response to Tony Flank's from Montreal, Canada. Uh, thank you for sending in your questions. Uh, the question was, what are my favorite hobbies? Well, my favorite hobbies, uh, it's a wide range. Different kind of sports, like uh, I fly airplanes, I scuba dive, uh, skydive, fishing. Hunting is probably my favorite one, because uh, to me, fishing is a, is, is a great challenge. Just like professional wrestling is, it's a great challenge. You gotta go out, and you gotta look for the deer, and uh, it's usually in cold season. And I just uh, plainly, plain, like the outdoors, you, know, you could call me uh, probably the real nature boy because that's exactly what I like. I like nature. I think it's great to be outdoors and just the challenge of being out there and uh, tracking deers down. And at the same time, I think it's a great workout because you do a lot of walking. And uh, like I said, uh, thank you. And I'd like to say hello to everybody in Montreal. Thank you, Ronnie Garvin. I'm sure Ric Flair will appreciate Ronnie Garvin calling himself the real nature boy. Don't forget, if you have a question you'd like us to ask your favorite wrestler, send it to Pro Wrestling Illustrated Scouting Report. And if your question's used on the air, we'll send you absolutely free a Pro Wrestling Illustrated t-shirt. Okay, Magnum, as you know, many things have been happening in the last couple of weeks here. Um, the controversy between the Rock and Roll Express and the Midnight Express and Jim Cornette. Next week, we hope to have an in-depth interview with the Rock and Roll Express about that. Um, before we leave, any message you'd like to give to your fans about your, your upcoming title defenses against some of these challengers? Well, what I'd like to do is really say thanks for all the support that the people have been giving me all this time. I know that maybe sometimes after you achieve a goal, it seems anticlimactic when you're not on the chase. But for me, the challenge of defending the United States Heavyweight Championship is just as great a challenge, and I hope I have your continued support in 1986. That's great. You've been, once again, you've been a great guest on Scouting Reports. Thank you. Thank you. Till next time, this is Bill After for Pro Wrestling Illustrated Scouting Reports, along with Magnum TA.